Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again on a really weird Sunday afternoon weather-wise. Anyway, I'm looking at this 15 watt plus 15 watt stereo amplifier build that I'm going to be doing again today. As I said in the last video, things are subject to change. Now I haven't had the PCBs made yet, uh, as the power supply one subject to change. I want to check that the muting circuit's going to operate correctly with the values chosen. Um, before going to the expense of having the board made and finding out it doesn't work properly. So we're looking at the muting section of that power supply I showed in the previous video. There'll be a card up here to that video. There's also some other thoughts that I've had in the meantime and what changes I'm going to do, which I'll explain at the end of the video. Now, here we've got our muting circuit. We come off of secondary winding of the transformer. 25 volt, 24, 25 volt AC. Goes through this, which is not marked, a 1N4004 uh, half wave rectifier diode into this 100 microfarad smoothing capacitor. We've got a 2K2 dropper resistor and an LED here for power indication. It then goes through this 22K resistor, which is marked with a question mark. Now it's marked for a question mark because I don't know if this resistor is going to be high enough with this capacitor to give us a reasonable delay of around two seconds. So that's subject to experimentation. Um, so then it goes with this 100 microfarad capacitor as an RC network, which provides a delay constant to this BC547. I chose that because it's collected to emitter is roughly 45 volt, which should be plenty. Um, and that goes through our relay coil. I've forgotten again, as usual, to put in the back EMF diode, but it's there now. Um, and we have a 560 ohm limiting resistor. Now that was based on the relay's coil resistance versus its current, which is around about 42 MA, and the voltage drop presented by the relay to calculate that value. That's a one watt device. So I've got the parts I've need. I've got a bunch of transistors for testing things with and the relay which is important. Now in the JCAR catalogue it says the DC resistance of this coil is around 260 ohm I think it said 270. But the other SPDT version of this relay is only 174 so unless it's a misprint which it very well could be. So I don't see how the core resistance between the DPDT and the SPDT version would be different, higher. If it was a 24 volt relay, maybe. So I'm gonna measure the DC resistance of this relay just to confirm whether the catalog is correct or incorrect. Wait for it to range. Yeah, it's actually correct. It's more like 257 ohms, which Okay, the catalog is correct. I think it did say 260 now, thinking about it. Which brings me to these two 1 watt resistors, which are 560 ohm, which was calculated based on the data that I had on this relay for its core resistance to calculate what the limiting resistor should have been. So I guess the best thing to do now is to build it up on a piece of breadboard and test that it actually works. Okay, I've got the circuit built up on a little bit of breadboard. I thought I'd use a small one today. I've forgotten how much I hate this breadboard uh, because the connections are very tight to get components in, but it's built and that's the main thing. I'm using 100 volt, 100 microfarad capacitors for absolutely no reason. It's just what capacitors I had on hand. I did go to JCAR, but they didn't have any 63 volt, 100 microfarads, which is annoying. So I'm just going to use these two for the test. That's not what's going to be in the final design, obviously. They're just way overkill for the job. So now I guess the thing would be to do is to hook it up to my toroidal transformer and power supply, hook up the relay, and see if it works. All right, I've got everything set up. Nothing shorting. I'm using 
the dim bulb tester for really absolutely no reason except it's convenient power switch um, also it will limit the current through this circuit in case there's a problem so let's turn it on and see what happens well the LED came on the relay came in after three seconds but nothing's getting overly hot hmm Okay, well that worked first time without having to modify anything. How nice. Now if I turn the switch off, that relay should drop out instantly. Or well, within a few milliseconds. Like that. So I'll turn it back on and I'll time how long it takes for that relay to click in. It's about two and a half seconds, which is not bad. Hmm. Nice. Well, I'm happy that worked out reasonably well. What I should do is just measure what the voltage across my relay coil is, just to make sure everything is happy. Multimeter's connected. Climbing to seven and a half volts so the engagement of the relays around about six volt which is not bad we'll see where that settles down to we seem to be around about the eight volt mark mm -hmm. okay and we'll see how that instantly dropped out now the next thing i want to do is verify the um, contacts connections so I need to go to continually so that's normally closed that's normally open okay sweet I now know that this these two outer pins that's the center there and that one there, if I can find something else to point with. That one there is our normally open connection, which is what connects to the amplifier after uh, the speaker is engaged. Now, I think I've actually got the PCB routed backwards. This is why it's always a good idea to check things, because if it's backwards, it's not going to work correctly. So that's something I'll have a look at on my PCB design now I know these two outer pins are the center and the normally open position which is where we want it. Uh, the circuit board also includes a little connector which disconnects the base of the transistor from the RC network capacitor and resistor to provide an instant off mute so for instance if you were to plug a pair of headphones into a headphone socket, you can use the switch of the headphone socket to switch the speakers out, which makes it easier than having to route the wires into the headphone socket from the output of the amplifier or whatever and then switch, switch it that way. It's just more convenient. Uh, you can get like headphone sockets that have like 10 pins on them and they have DPD switches in them as well as your two normal left and right channel outputs. So yeah. So now I know that that works correctly, I can move on to something else now. So how do we calculate this 560 ohm resistor value for this relay? Well, we need to know three things. One, what the VCC voltage is, which is after rectification on this line. We need to know the voltage of the relay, and we also need to know its current. Now, a lot of manufacturers don't print that information about what its coil current is, but we can calculate the coil current from its resistance. So Ohm's law says I equals V or E divided by R. So that would equal uh, 12 volts divided by 254 ohms, which gives us a rough current of 47 milliamps, a little bit higher than what I calculated. So now we know the coil current, we can calculate the resistor value and how we do that
So how we do that is we go resistance equals the VCC minus our coil voltage, which is 12. So this is 35 volts minus 12, which now equals 23. And we divide that by our coil current, which equals 489 ohms. So about 500 ohm would be correct. Now we'd go to the nearest value, which is 560. You could go 470, it'll be a slightly less uh, current limit. So we now need to know what our resistor's wattage needs to be. So we can do that simply because we know the parameters. Well, P equals V times I. So that equals 12 volts multiplied by 0.047 MA, which equals 564 watts. So we go to the nearest value, which is one watt. That's it, that's how simple it is to calculate that. And finally for this video, on to the changes to make to the power amp. Now, someone in the comments on the last video about my planning stage said that this one amp BD139 transistor is overkill for the job. It doesn't need to be that high. We can simply use like a BC549 here instead and a 100MA transistor and it should be am ample. So, um, the 549 is a collector to a minute voltage of 30 volts. So it's at the 35 volt rail pushing things. So what I might do is I might start with a BC547 and um, see if the amplifier still works. Bearing in mind that now our feedback, negative feedback or our halfway voltage point is going to be now different because it's a different transistor so we've got to keep that in mind. But first I'm going to verify that the amplifier still works and nothing has gone awry in its current configuration before I modify it. Okay, everything's set up, hooked up to the power supply, dummy load, oscilloscope and uh, oscillator which is off screen. Um, now I think everything's connected right. I believe so anyway, so I'll turn it on. And yes, we do have an output still, as we can see there. And we should still be able to go to well it's actually a lot less than what I was getting the other day but anyway that's irrelevant at this point so what I'll do is I'll change out that transistor all I've got to do is move the base and collector wires around to make it work for the different transistor let me get to that. Alright, BC547 is now in circuit. The pin connections have been reversed. Uh, yeah, it doesn't like that. Okay, that's not right. Let me change that uh, capacitor, that transistor to a 548 now and see if I've got a difference. Right, 548 is in. This is why we experiment. Okay, turn it on. And it's doing exactly the same thing. All right. Question is as to why. Hmm. All right. Let me try his suggestion of a uh, five four nine. All right. Five four nine is in, and let's see if we get any different results here. Well, that seems stable except when you crank it up. Yeah, it doesn't like that for some reason. Yeah, it's not, it's not performing right. Yeah. So no, it's not going to work too well with that transistor, unfortunately. BD139 is back in. It was like the amplifier was trying to oscillate. It could be because it's going through the dim bulb too. See, it functions fine. 
on this, although we're not getting proper output voltage. Alright, so I played with it off camera. Um, I found the issue with this not giving me full output power obviously is because of the dim bulb. So the dim bulb is now out of circuit. I retried all those three signal transistors. No, no output. It does not work or function correctly. No matter where I set this negative feedback. I mean, if I set there and modified resistor values, maybe it would. However, I'm going to leave it in its current configuration. The BD139 is fine where it is. And we're getting close to our 30 volts before clipping, so close to 15 watts. So that's its sweet spot, spot. that's where I'm happy, and that's where it's going to stay. So now that I've covered all bases, don't worry about those transistors, I will find uses for them later. There's, there's no harm in having, you know, a bunch of transistors around for testing things. I am actually no longer going to be using this rack mount case, mainly because of these rails are annoying, and the placement of these vents makes it awfully awkward to mount all my components successfully. Plus, these things have to be cut off in order to fit everything in. And I can buy from Alltronics a one unit rack case, which is a better design than this. Um, and when I order it, I'll show you it. For about $85.95, I think it is. It has a bottom steel panel with no ventilation holes on it at all, so it's just one complete flat panel. Uh, it has maximum space available inside, therefore I can mount my components wherever I want and still have enough space. And the front panel has a lip on either the top and the bottom. It does not have handles, so you do not have screw holes going through the front to mount the thing to. The sides just mount to the panel via some screws. I can't remember how, but I think it's from the bottom and the top. There's ones on the corner or something, but I'll show you when I get the case. It's not that expensive. These are still sold at JCAR for like 135 bucks. No. Plus, the internal height of this is only like about 34 millimeters. The ones from Ultronics are roughly 37, 38. I need all the space height I can. I'm also going to change my heatsink idea as well. You may be saying to yourself, but Astro, wasn't that a complete waste of time drilling that panel? And didn't you just waste a panel on the rack case? Yeah, well, as I said in the previous video, for some reason, I ended up with four of those panels that form the back panel and the sub panel. I still got three, so it doesn't matter. That panel can be used for the metal for something else, like small heat sinks or whatever. And I've still got another panel to put on the back there and I can use that rack case for anything and I haven't drilled into the front, haven't destroyed it, so it's no longer useful for anything. But um, yeah, <coughs> that's for a future video. Anyway, I'm going to leave this video here and if you enjoyed it, please remember to rate, comment and subscribe below and you can always follow me on Facebook and become a Patreon member for as little as a dollar a month. Anyway, this is Yashiro 3 saying, see ya, happy amplifiers. This will be a cool project when it's built. Not exactly cheap as I wanted it to, probably going to be about the two, three hundred dollar mark, but yeah.